away my hopelessness, the way you opened up my eyes. I could never have imagined the charming world you taught me how to see. Thank you, Jesus, for all. Beautiful song, especially the message of the song says, Thank you, Jesus, for all the things. I am praying that it will inspire each one of us. Are you familiar with the song that says, He will carry you? There is no problem so big that God cannot solve it. There is no mountain that is tall that God cannot move it. And there is no storm so strong that God cannot calm it. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know, my brother, that he will carry you. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know, my sisters, that he will carry you. The lyric of the song is giving us the picture that God is able to help us because He is a powerful God. And He is a merciful God. But there is a verse in the Bible that I'd like to share to you this evening that is found in Hebrews chapter 4 starting from verse 14. And we'll be reading up to 16. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can read with me in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Take note that the song tells us that we have a powerful God and He's able to carry you. We have a powerful God and whatever problems you have, Maybe you consider it as a big problem, but there's no problem too big that he cannot solve it. We have a powerful God that there's no mountain too tall that he cannot move it. And even though you are in the storm of life, God can help you. But here in the verses that we will be reading, it's again another assurance that God really will be with us. Okay, you, are you there? Let us now read Hebrews chapter 4, 6, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have great high press, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we cannot, for we do not have a high press who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Beautiful verses from the book of Hebrews. What this message, what are the messages? What messages are actually being sent in these verses? Actually, when you try to look at the tenor of the book of Hebrews, it is the goal is that convincing us that Jesus Christ is God. And he is our high priest. And Jesus Christ is mediating with us. And that's the very theme of the book of Hebrews. And here in Hebrews 4, 14, 16, it is again presenting an argument that we should be convinced that Jesus is God. 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through heavens, who has passed through heavens. 
is not only the atmospheric heaven, but into the heavens of heaven. Meaning that in the tenor, God, Jesus Christ, is God. And then it says, Jesus, the Son of God. And that's the very reason why we should go on, why we should hold fast to what we believe. And the audience here is those who were converted to Jesus Christ and about to be discouraged. Hold fast to what you believe. Don't be discouraged. Maybe your discouragement is coming from the many challenges in life. Hold fast what you believe because what you believe that Jesus Christ is really God. He passed through heavens and is the Son of God. And then when you go to 15, for we do not have a high press. In the Hebrews, the high press word, they could relate to that because they have been practicing that in the earthly sanctuary as a symbol of how God could mediate, how a priest could mediate. And for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with us and our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Ah, yes, the message of these verses. It talks about the identity of Jesus Christ as he is the Son of God. He is God. But the good news is that that God, Jesus Christ, became our high priest. And that high priest could relate to our experiences. That God, Jesus Christ, became a man. And because he became a man, he lived with us, he could relate to our experiences. Because he has gone through everything that man has to go through. And he is like us in all things, except that he emerged from it all completely sinless. I like the passage that we should hold on the confession of our faith because we have Jesus Christ who is God, but he became a man and he is now mediating with us. He is now our high priest and he can relate to our experiences. Why he could relate to our experiences? Because he went through with all what we have going through today. What are you going uh, do? Uh, what are you going through in your life? For example, temptations. Temptations. Are you struggling with the temptation? Are you struggling with your weaknesses? Are you going through with that struggle? Ah, we have high press. We have high press. We have Jesus Christ, who is a God, but he became a man and experienced our experience. If you are struggling with your temptation, Jesus is able to help you because he himself passed through the hardest temptation. Temptations had gone through the fiercest temptation. Another one, Jesus, was tempted far beyond what we are being tempted. If you feel that your struggle against your addiction, if you feel that your struggle against what any area and you are, you are struggling for that, you go to Jesus Christ, he could mediate with you and he can relate to your experience because he has gone through that kind of experience, that kind of struggle. You look back during the time when he was tempted, he was uh, being tempted by Satan to, to turn the stone into bread and other temptations, which is we could consider that the strong temptation of all. Ah, yes, Jesus Christ was tempted far beyond what we are. And Jesus, Jesus Christ also experienced the bitterest experience that you have. Think of your experience in life. Have you experienced what you consider as the bitterest 
experience. Yes, Jesus Christ experienced that. I don't know how many of you who have the bitter experience that you perspire with blood. I don't know how many of you that you really cried intensely because of the bitterness of your experience. If you experience that, the book of Hebrews is telling us, you know, there is somebody who is powerful but can relate to your experience. I'd like to invite you to look back at the Gethsemane. Jesus kneeling and pleading to his Father. Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. As he was about to be crucified, to be offered as a final lamb for our sin and a final offering for our sin, ah, he was, he was looking at his experience, a painful experience, that he will be hung in the cross so painful. And he was crying. I look at the, the word crying in that context, in the original word, it's not just an ordinary cry. In fact, the description, when Jesus cried in Gethsemane, his whole body moved. I don't know how many of you cried as that you cannot control the movement and the shaking of your own body because of the bitterness of your experience. So if we experience a bitter experience, uh, Jesus Christ, our high priest, can relate to that. He experienced that kind of experience. If you are in sorrow, Jesus Christ also experienced sorrow. And he can sympathize with us because he experienced our experience. Those who experience sorrow today because of the passing of losing their loved ones through death, Jesus can relate to your experience. Look at him when he was still here on this earth. He cried dur during the death of Lazarus. He can empathize with us. When we cry, he joins us in our sorrow because he experienced that. I just love what, what John Foster he related his experience. According to him, one day when he came home, he saw his daughter crying. His, do his daughter was listening to the radio. And he was, she was crying. And Foster was surprised. Why are you crying? And then later on, Foster realized that there was a news in the radio. And the news was Japanese tanks entered Canton today. When the daughter of Foster heard that, then she cried intensely. Maybe if you hear that kind of news, there's nothing. Ah, there is war. But maybe you'll not cry. But what is the reason of the crying of the daughter of Foster? Because, according to her, I was there. The daughter of Foster grew up, was born and grew up in Canton. To some people, the news would not affect most people. But why then is John Foster's daughter in tears? Because she had been born in Canton. To her, Canton meant a home, a nurse. She worked as a nurse there for many years. She worked in the school, and she developed friendship in that place. I was there. That's the reason of my sorrow. Ah, that's the reason why I'm crying. Why she cried? Because she had been there, and she could relate the experience of people in Canton when it was intruded by the Japanese. And there is no part of your life of which experience that Jesus also experienced. 
So, this is a very meaningful verse. Oh, hold on to your confession to Jesus Christ. Hold on to your trust. Because He is our high priest. He could relate to your experience. There's no part of your experience that Jesus could not say that I have not experienced it. Yes, Jesus could always say, I have been there. When you are in sorrow, Jesus could say, I have been there. When you are lonely, Jesus could say, I have been there. Those of you who are struggling financially, then Jesus could say, I have been there. Are you hurting? And Jesus could say, I have been there. Are you now sick? And you cannot understand. Are you struggling with your pain? Jesus can relate with that experience. Because he could say, I have been there. When we have a sad and sorry tale to tell, when life has drenched us with tears, we do not go to God who is incapable of understanding what has happened. We go to God who have experienced our experience. For we have not a high priest who cannot feel with us Jesus is the perfect high priest. He experienced our experience. He knows our problems because he has come through them. The best person to give you an advice and help you in your journey is someone who, is, who has traveled that road before you. Jesus has traveled that road that you are encountering. Jesus can help because he knows it all. He is a perfect priest because he is perfectly God and man, because he has known our life, and he cannot give sympathy and mercy if he had not experienced our experience. <coughs> so I'd like to close this, that I, have, that I hope that every one of us could be convinced this evening that we have Jesus Christ mediating in our behalf. He can easily forgive us because he experienced our experience. When you are struggling with your sin, he can easily forgive us. When you are praying, especially with your problems, he can easily could relate to us and he can easily help us. And you know, these verses really help me today and even during the time when I was here at Mountain View College. Every time I, I am about to feel discouraged because of a hardship, because of pain, because of whatever suffering, I always remind myself, Jesus could relate to my experience and when we ask help, he could readily help us because he knows that kind of experience. And someday, he will come and bring us in a place where no more pain and no more sorrow. Yes, there is a gracious God filled with love. He never leaves us alone. There is a loving God who cares. He understands our struggle. He is our priest. He could mediate with us because he understands our struggle. He is a powerful God. No problems too big that he cannot solve it. No mountain too tall that he cannot move it. No storm so strong that he cannot uh, help us because he's powerful God. But mostly, we cannot be assured that he can help us because he can relate to our experience. He is now mediating in our behalf. He is God, but he became a man and experienced all the experiences that we have. And he could always say, I was there. I am capable to help you because I could relate with your experience. May this study could inspire us this evening and will continue to resolve in ourselves to continue to serve the living God.